I gotta be honest folks, I had no clue what this video would be or turn into when I first begun filming, however, now I guess you could say that it's all about showcasing just how viable Wendy and Abigail actually are. Throughout, we will pit ourselves against nearly every boss in the game in order to discuss strategies needed to murder them with the dead or even just warn against fighting them at all. So, let's get to it. And we'll be starting low before we grow. But why are we already at Nightbeard? Well, if she can't hold her own at night when she's at her strongest, then she obviously cannot handle the heat at any other time of day. Many initial tests will also see Abigail fighting alone without our help or the help of potions. But don't fret. We'll be running multiple tests each time when needed. But Spider Queens here are technically bosses, albeit mini bosses of sorts. And while Abigail will outright destroy any of the additional spiders that will spawn, you will come to find that even a Spider Queen's 80 damage will add up very fast, especially if one or two of her spawns get a hit in as well. Abby will only just knock a Spider Queen down to half health, even while at her strongest. So be be careful to leave her alone when it ain't nighttime. But let's say you join in the fray. Is fighting together during the morning or dusk all right then? Absolutely it is. And in fact, it will be more than all right for just about every scenario in this video. So be prepared to see a lot of fights take place with Abigail at her weakest, actually, just to see if it's possible, because it can go both ways. If Abby can't do it alone at night, then she can't do it alone otherwise. And if together Wendy and Abby can vanquish bosses during the day, then obviously at night, the duo can simply make things easier. So good. Now that we're all on the same page, let's go through the rest of the video. And let's immediately bump it up a notch. Two tree guardians, only 500 more health than spider queens, mind you, but far more deadly. I think a lot of folks forget just how strong tree guardians are against other mobs, as they can deal upwards of 150 plus damage a hit. Way too much for our girl here, even with some regenerating potions on. But again, get in on the action yourself and things become a cinch, as tree guardians are a single target attacker, meaning some hits will land on you, while others on Abigail. Never both at the same time, and this will become a very common theme throughout this video, so be mindful of its impact on whether the fight is doable or not. However, again, notice that it's daytime and how we're handling our friend here. The sisterly duo is very much back to fighting alongside one another and doing it quite effectively. Now that is something to greatly appreciate over a glass cannon playstyle. But here is where the fun begins. And by fun, I mean where I might begin to rip your hopes and dreams to shreds. Listen people, you simply cannot kite with Abigail. Not without being overly safe or without putting her in severe risky situations. There are certainly times where you both can avoid damage, yes, but the timing of it all throughout any fight is not user friendly in the slightest, and a hit still means 150 bloody damage. Oh, and by the way, I am using the Vigor Mortis here, the potion that gives me speed boost, and I have Abigail on the option to stay as close to me as possible. So as you can see, again, not really all that great. Getting the attack cycles on point is a hair pulling nightmare. But the alternative is going toe to toe all together. And even with both types of shields active, as seen here, you will be seeing the same unfortunate result, death. Klops is not only known as a heavy hitter, his attacks are area of effect, so both you and Abby will be taking some hefty blows. And while together, you will certainly be able to get him below half health before Abigail dies, you'll be looking pretty worse for wear yourself, if you know what I mean. Up close and personal means plenty of damage taken, getting frozen every few hits, Abby died before the deed is even done, and all this while at night dealing the most damage possible. This entire Deer Clop segment is to prove a point. The only elixirs that matter are the health regenerating spectral cure-all, and of course the damage modifying nightshade nostrum if you need it. 
These two tests both utilize the Spectral Cure-All, however one has a save from the freezing ability of Klops' attacks, while the other is a pure face-to-face -face fight. And to showcase the best method possible to murdering Klops, I kept the campfire tanking method at day with the basic fight at night, and even with such differences in damage output, the campfire taking method takes the cake by a mile. More time for when to attack means constant buffed damage. But that being said, both methods will actually see Klops dead with you and Abigail still alive. So yes, health regeneration is all you need for big bad fights then, right? Wrong, because sometimes bosses are so overwhelming that no matter what you do or how you do it, the end result will always be the same. And Berger is one of those bosses. His 200 damage attacks will slaughter most anything. His attacks disarm, and even his attacks outside of the ground pound hit multiple targets at once. All this to say that whether you choose to either leave Abigail to her own devices, or decide to join her in the fight itself, it is an absolute mess, even with a group of other players. Because Berger is a boss that needs to be kited, and Wendy cannot kite with Abigail in tow. It's just not feasible. Moose Goose, on the other hand, is unbelievably easy, as always, but can anyone guess why she is a single target attacker? No AOEs of any sort, is just a slow attacker in general, and even wastes her attacks at times through a disarming honk or a frenzied animation. Heck, you may go through the entire fight without Abigail even getting hit or vice versa for beat's sake, and slap some healing on and you're good to go. Moose Goose is a for sure victory. Her demon spawns, however, are a different story. All is fine and dandy just as long as you dodge them and pick one target over and over and over again, but if you let them surround Abby, it's kind of all over. So be very careful once Mama's dead so, otherwise it is an all around easy fight. And another very, very simple bout, Antlion, who is always bloody easy to begin with anyways, but still. She's a pushover with Abigail. I even had an absolute garbage fight myself and still came out on top. And that is because of something I thought for sure Clay would take away in the second rework, but apparently didn't at all. Abigail cannot be damaged by Antlion's sand spikes, so it is just truly free reign the entire fight. Have fun, but on to one of the truer tests. That is the Sisters versus Dragonfly. And believe it or not, I actually have some good news for you folks. The fight is very much possible, even with Abigail only dealing her 15 damage per tick. That will change, however, as the fight is gonna last almost a full in-game day when playing solo. So over time, the damage output will actually get better. But all this being said, there are some extreme dangers to keep in mind. Riling up Abigail will have her attack the larva spots, which will enrage Dragonfly faster, and perhaps at very inconvenient times. In a similar vein, Abigail may just continue to attack Dragonfly while she is enraging, which will actually stop her calming animation when we use a pan flute or something else to do so, which will actually just make her re-enrage. And that is obviously not good. But finally, a longer fight means way more resources, healing, armor, and potentially weapons needed. And this fight will deplete you like crazy, no matter who you are playing. Oh, and did I even mention that Dragonfly deals 150 damage to mobs, so if you forget to put healing on Abby now and then, you may end up losing her because you're going to be too engrossed in the fight. But thankfully, apart from her enraged area of effect attack, Dragonfly is also a single target attacker. So is the fight possible? Absolutely it is. But is it anywhere near viable for most players out there? Absolutely not. And you will eventually come to understand that that is the common little thing that get calls into question when it comes to Wendy versus bosses. But that is a good thing actually. We don't want her to be overly powerful. However, again, some bosses aren't even viable at all, and Claws is one of those bosses for sure. This is one that you're better off not even trying yourself. You can actually kite pretty effectively in this fight, but that is not the concern here. 
The issue is that Abigail attacks the deer, and this is no good. A dead deer means an enraged clause, and an enraged clause means death for just about everyone and everything in the bloody constant. It is possible to kill Claus before Abby kills the deer, but this is not a fight to take that chance with. Claus should be off the table for sure, at least when it comes to playing solo. Ah, but another test of might, the Bee Queen. And this is an interesting one, folks, because it might look easier and way more straightforward than the Dragonfly fight, with no need for an arena prep or anything like that, but by golly, this one is a pure endurance test. Most of the fight will see Abigail fighting the Grumbles, while you go mano e mano with the Bee Queen herself. And this is what you really, really need to try to maintain throughout the entire thing. However, I noticed a potentially dangerous hiccup that occasionally happens throughout the fight that might cause this issue. Abby will, for whatever reason, change her own aggro to Bee Queen, leaving the Grumbles to attack us at will. It is very strange, and I think it has something to do with the speed of the Grumbles now and then, but what makes it worse is that even as more Grumbles spawn, Abby will just refuse to attack them for some reason. The sudden change in combat tactics could be enough for you to forget to apply healing to Abby or yourself, you may get overwhelmed very quickly, or the Queen will just dwindle down Abigail without you ever noticing, and it might even get beyond recovery. And I know how bad that sounds, and the way to fix this switch in aggro is to stay as close to the Queen as possible, with Abby right up on her as well, to get her damage hitting everything at once. However, you may need to stop fighting the Queen on occasion for a bit to save yourself from the Grumbles in order to do this. Other than that, it is another long fight, which means a lot of needed resources to finish it, potentially even more than the Dragonfly fight, actually. But when Abby is working as she's supposed to, the fight is doable. Only just, though. So good luck. The Shadow Beast's beard? Are you serious? Actually, yes. This fight is incredibly easy, all things considered. And my only advice is this. Kill the Knight first, then the Rook, and then leave the level 3 Bishop for last. You could do it where the Rook is the last to die. However, with his insane range, speed, and multiple target attack, I don't think it's wise to leave anything but the Bishop for last. This one surprised me the most, if I'm honest. It is very viable. But it's the final stretch down under, everyone, and I've got some good news and bad news. Toadstool here is possible, however, extremely unlikely. Even with us being down under, meaning Abby does her max damage all the time, it is just difficult to manage the boom shroom proximity, and simply fighting Toadstool solo is a pain in the you-know-what regardless. There are flashes of absolute greatness, like how you can leave Abigail riled up while you go chop down the trees to just constantly keep up the damage, but still, you really should not attempt it this way. Throw in some cheese though, and it's easy peasy lemon squeezy. Might cost you a lot, however it is one of the best methods to killing Toadstool that there is. That being said, do not be mistaken, it is the cheese that makes this fight viable, not Wendy and Abigail. So I'd have to call this one a wash as well, just like the Badger and Claws fights. Oh, same goes for Misery Toad too, mind you. But this one may shock you. The Ancient Guardian ain't that bad either. Just as long as he targets you more often than he targets Abigail. He deals a hundred flippin' damage to everything he hits, and although that is way less than others, his attack speed is what worries me, and it certainly makes up the difference. Have healing on Abigail, just in case, but if he decides to go after her over you multiple times in a row, he can very easily overwhelm that healing with ease. Heck, he can just overwhelm our healing for Pete's sake if he wanted. Our saving grace, though, is again, you guessed it, he is a single target target attacker. But last and likely least, the Ancient Fuel Weaver. I won't lie to you and say that it's not possible, but this fight is already very difficult mechanics-wise, even without all this other fuss to worry about. We can easily knock him down to his spawning phases, but what I thought would happen actually doesn't. Abigail doesn't hit all the tiny nightmare creatures that roam to Fuel Weaver to heal him. 
you will have to run around and hit them yourself. Then go destroy the hidden shadow torches and then go back to damaging him. Only he is very likely healed up and all that time, Abby is vulnerable and she's the sole target for all of his damage. The fight is doable, but you have to know what the heck you are doing. This is one of the toughest ones there is, no matter what. And there you have it, everyone. A somewhat randomly thrown together showcase of Wendy and Abigail versus every boss and Don't Starve Together. And to be perfectly honest, I still have no idea why I made this video in the first place. But I guess it's somewhat due to me still just not enjoying Wendy's ectoherbology elixir still. They're all just still garbage outside of two. And even then, one of the two technically isn't even needed as shown throughout this video. These potions should allow for far more versatility beyond her already established horde mob capabilities. These potions should be used more for these boss fights and beyond. Heck, maybe even some of the potions should just be for Wendy. Now, do not misinterpret this as many folks have been doing. I am not asking for us to just be suddenly more powerful. That is not the point. And another thing is this. No, this video does not actually go against what I've been saying about Wendy and Abigail lately. It only proves the aforementioned point. These fights are possible, but not without some egregious amounts of preparation and an unreasonable amount of skill for most players out there when both these things can be uniquely made up through Wendy's ectoherbology. Do not make her powerful. Never do that. Wendy needs to remain a support character with opportunities like this. So I guess this whole 17 minute video comes down to this sentence. Just fix these damn potions for heaven's sake. Thanks for watching everyone. Well wishes to all. Please stay safe out there in this strange time and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.